Hi, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur. There's a common perception that uh, using sculpting techniques like divide and conquer, they induce a lot of zonular stress and are not the right way to divide the nucleus. Some of the concepts we have and uh, that's what I'd like try to explore in this case scenario. Now, she is an elderly 85-year-old lady who has this hypermature cataract and I'm expecting a dense nucleus underneath it. And the B scan has revealed a vitreous opacity which is more likely to be an asteroid hylosis and there's always been an association of a, a posterior capsule which is very thin and vulnerable to tear in eyes with these uh, asteroid hylosis patients. I am a little bit concerned about the possibility of a PC tear in this uh, hard cataract, especially during nucleus division techniques. So I'm just wondering which technique to use and I have decided that I'm going to use the four quadrant technique. And let us see whether the sculpting maneuvers and the lateral division maneuvers are going to induce any stress on the posterior capsule as well as on the zonules. Since I'm dealing with a slightly bulky and a hard nucleus, my goal is to have a slightly bigger excess, maybe about 5.5 millimeter in size, but not less than that. The rexus is done. I believe this rexus is decent enough to manage this nucleus. As the procedure is being done, I would want you to just keep an eye on the parameters which I've been using in these cases. So as is customary, we begin to aspirate the epinucleus in the overlying cortex in the epinucleus mode of the settings using just very low power. And once the overlying epinucleus in cortex is removed and the underlying hard nucleus is exposed, the settings are changed to the sculpt mode. Please note that I'm using a balance tip on a Centurion machine and this is the energy which I'm using to sculpt. I'm going to use torsional energy continuous and the maximum is set at 90% and it will be used in a linear mode. So keep an eye on the amount of energy which is being used by, by pressing on the foot pedal. And also keep a note whether the nucleus is being pushed at or shoved at or is there any hint of any stress on the capsule rim, posterior capsule or the zonules. Please note that I am using my second instrument, the chopper, to stabilize the nucleus as the sculpting is being done now. So initially a superficial groove is created, then subsequently it is widened just enough to allow access for the sleeve to get into the deeper core of the nucleus. So unless and until we widen the superficial part of the groove, it's difficult for us to access the more harder part of the central nucleus because the narrow groove is going to impede the movement of the wider sleeve. So it's critical that we widen it slightly bigger than the dimension of the sleeve so that we get good access to the posterior aspect of the uh, nucleus. Once 50% depth is reached, the nucleus is rotated and 90 degrees to it, I'm going to create another groove uh, distal from the central point. So the idea is to create a, a sort of a cross so that we get four quadrants once we break the posterior plate. Again, care is taken to gradually shave the uh, nucleus from the superficial aspect and gradually proceed downwards. An important point to remember is the nucleus is thickest in the central part and thinnest at the peripheral part. So this concept has to be understood while creating the groove. The nucleus is then rotated to 90 degrees and the, the next groove is subsequently deepened. This is already a deep groove but still I am going to deepen it still further. As we can see that the coring has to be done more in the central part rather than in the peripheral aspect. Again because of the biconvex nature of the lens. The nucleus is rotated and the last groove is being created. It's important for us to assess the exact depth. I want to go at least 90% depth, especially in the center so that I don't have to struggle to break the posterior plate during lateral separation. So I'm just wanting to ensure that the depth of the grooves, at least in the central portion, is 90% depth. The nucleus is rotated and just trying to deepen those grooves. So 
So how do you know that the groove is deep enough? Well, the yellow or the brown color of the nucleus begins to fade away and we can see a slightly grayish area in the part where it is thinned out. It's in the peripheral part of the nucleus, not in the central. At this point, I think that the depth which I've received is deep good enough. And now is the time to do the lateral separation. So for a change, I'm going to use the chop mode setting to do the lateral separation rather than doing just passively with the probe and the, the second instrument. So I'm going to just hold one fragment with my FACO tip and then use the chopper to do the lateral separation maneuvers. By this, I feel that the grip would be better and the lateral separation would be much more effortless. So the lateral separation maneuver is being done. First effort doesn't give a full thickness separation. The second attempt does give an easy separation. The nucleus is rotated. The tip is again buried into the right half of the nuclear fragment and the lateral separation maneuver is done. The posterior plate is broken and we have a free fragment. The nucleus is then rotated to the other heminucleus. The same maneuver of burying and lateral separation is being tried. 90% of the fragment is freed but there is one small attachment at the base. I just maneuver the nucleus so that I get access to the base and then short burst of FACO breaks that bridge and the fragment is emulsified. Carefully and in a controlled manner, the remaining part of the nucleus is being emulsified. Uh, care is taken to ensure that the plane of emulsification is as posterior as possible and I am ensuring that my second instrument is right on top of the quadrant as it is being emulsified so that it doesn't hit the cornea. The last two fragments are again being emulsified. For emulsification as I have always been telling, so I am going to use just the continuous torsional with the IP on. So in a matter of a few seconds, all the fragments are emulsified. A small piece is noted at the side port. It is just flushed into the chamber and then out of the eye. The cortex is very minimal. It is just aspirated and the planned multi-piece hydrophobic lens is implanted into the bag. Now let's rewind and try to debate whether the sculpting maneuver causes any excessive stress on the zonules. Now in this case, as the sculpting is being done, we can clearly see that there's hardly any push at the back. There's hardly any shoving at the nucleus. And the nucleus material is just melting in front of the tip as the tip is going to and fro. Of course, stabilizing the nucleus with my second instrument does help. But what is important for us to understand is that we're using the high ultrasound energy to do the cutting job for us. And torsional energy does had an additional advantage that it cuts exceptionally well. So you don't have to use any mechanical pushing. So if you have the right tool or if you can set your machine appropriately, I believe even you know, in the Oatly machine, if you use continuous energy, there is hardly any wound burn as is the case with torsional. So we can use that. Only thing is you need to mentally remember that you need to use the cutting energy of the ultrasound, not the mechanical push or shoe. So if you're going to push and shoe the nucleus, that is what is going to cause stress on the posterior capsule as well as on the zonules. The most critical aspect while dealing with these hard nucleus is to have as deep a trench as possible. Then the lateral separation maneuvers become very effortless. The most common stage at which we can break a posterior capsule in hard cataracts is when you're doing trying to chop and then do lateral separation. So that is where maximum amount of stress is being put. So that can be minimized significantly by just sculpting deeply as deep as possible and a gentle lateral separation maneuver ensures that the posterior plate is broken without much of a fuss. So I'm convinced that if you use the right strategy to do sculpting, the divide and conquer technique does not induce any additional stress on the zonules. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.